things. We are live. From me, Colorado, it's Living on a Dime. Did Yay. I sound like Jenny Carson? Uh, sure. And it's raining. Man, if it was raining, that would be awesome. Oh. I'm having depression because it's not raining. I wish it would Wait, rain. Wait, we're live. We are definitely live, dear. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Did we get my Johnny Carson impression, though? That's the question. Did probably. anybody get it? I it's hope so. It's probably on there. Hello. That's Johnny. How he's doing? Our YouTube family. Never mind. <laughs> I did not get my tea stirred. I need to stir my tea. Because, you know, I've been in bed since... Last hour and a half. <laughs> hey, camera guy, can you pan right, please? That's left. All right. Yay. The dog. So That's today, left. from Dining on a Dime Cookbook, we are making Susie, Amy, page Trinity. 285, my apple crisp. But we're making blueberry crisp. Ooh. Because blueberries are my favorite. Blueberries and peaches are my two favorite fruit. Cherry is your favorite fruit, isn't it? Cherries and strawberries. I got it right after 23 years? <laughs> so, feel free to send Michael anything cherry. He loves cherries. Anything cherry. Oh, chocolate covered cherries. I will take anything peach or blueberry. Okay. Mom loves blueberries. Dave will take anything popcorn. Dave will take anything popcorn. So if you guys are harvesting and making jams or whatever, feel free to send any excess that you can't eat to our house. <laughs> All right, I'm sharing this recipe in the description or in the All comments. All right. I'm sorry, I forgot I'm my spoon. Okay, so Diane Dime Cookbook. Put the link for the cookbook, dear. Page 285. Dun, dun. We are making apple crisp, but I'm making it with blueberries. Now, you can switch any fruit you want. You can make it um, peach or cherry or rhubarb strawberry, strawberry rhubarb, however you want to say it. Uh, what it's, I said peach, I said cherry, I said blueberry. An apple, of course. You could do apple rhubarb. That would be really yummy. So you can do any of those. Okay? All right. Everybody like my new fall mug? Yeah. Can I look festive? Yes, it does. I got it at Dollar General. I can't believe it's fall tomorrow. I wasn't even expecting it since it was 90 yesterday. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking Wisconsin winters may not be that bad. <laughs> it was 90 here, and I kid you not, it was 68 degrees outside of our house, and it was 79 in the house. I was so mad. I'm like, I am not turning on the air conditioner when it was 68 degrees outside. Hey, we have Beau Blue Buffy Art from Scotland. Ooh, hey. Thanks for my joining us go? today. Did you do something with my pan? No, Ellie was using it. Oh, Ellie used my pan. Okay. <laughs> All right, so first things first is... You want to turn on your oven, and because it's really hot here today, we're going to do it anyway. It is fall. Dave, I think my head's chopped off. Oh, never mind. It is fall, and it is about time. I don't care if the weather is 90 degrees. I'm going to start baking. So Nicole's asking the name of the cookbook. It's... Dining on a Dime. <laughs> and page 285, for those of you just joining us. Okay, so... Now, I am using my Thrive Blueberries, and I wanted to test this recipe before my entire family finished. <laughs> this is all that's left. I've been going slower on those because they're kind of tart. This is all that's left. Okay, I have to admit, Ellie and I have both been working on them. Oh, thank you, Valerie. Valerie says the best cookbook ever. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, so I'm using the freeze-dried... Um, Dry blueberries, but you can use regular blueberries. Don't worry. I just want to test this and see how it goes. So, um, anyway, yeah. Here we go. So, pouring them in. Oh, do you need me to? 
kind of gives Now, I'm going to try something and we'll see if this works. Now, my recipe calls for water in here. So what I'm going to do, because I'm Tara, and I just test things, you know. Um, I um, so our I'm going to reconstitute them in here and see if it works. If you were going to buy them at the store fresh right now, would they be expensive? Yeah. They would be? In Colorado there. You can't get cheap blueberries in Colorado. It just doesn't happen. They don't grow here. And so... For us, man, that's good. This would be a good alternative for us because in Colorado, you just don't get good blueberries. Janine, oh, did you say something about rhubarb? Because Janine says where you, it's asking where you get rhubarb. Um. Or did somebody else say rhubarb? You can buy it frozen. I um, usually have friends who give it to me because they are um, have too much. Lisa loves your apron. If you want the last three blueberries, there's three blueberries left in there. When, um, but I'll when, have blueberry cobbler for you. When we were in Idaho, there was an old guy that was saying how sick of his rhubarb he was because it took over his whole yard. So he gave us some. He let us come and get as much as we wanted. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna set that to side, and then. In my mixing bowl. Oh, see, here's where you need to go. Gary says, the town we live in is named Bruton, Alabama, and every year we have a blueberry festival in June. The oh. first of the new year we have a blueberry drop to ring in the new holiday year all around. I love blueberry tea. I saw Rebecca from Justin Rhodes get some blueberry tea from somewhere in, was it Massachusetts or something? I was like, oh, I'd love to try that blueberry tea. Massachusetts or New Hampshire or something. I don't know. Somewhere over there. Okay, so I combined my brown sugar. Can you see all that? And then my oatmeal. I am using gluten-free because um, we're gluten-free. I tested not being gluten-free while we are on our trip. And even though... It doesn't give me some of the nasty side effects I used to have. I think it still affects me. So, I am going to be staying gluten-free probably until I'm dead, unfortunately. Not exactly what I would like to do, but all right. Hey, Alexia joined us from Broomfield, Colorado. Right. <gasps> Broomfield! We know Broomfield. Mike's brother is from there. Yeah. Okay. So then I'm going to put my gluten-free flour, but you can use, I mean, you just use regular flour. I'm just doing gluten-free because we need to be. So Heidi in Norway says it's 46 degrees outside. I'll change with you. Oh man, I would love for it to be 46. I just, I'm a cold person. I just, I like the cold. Oh, Shirley's asking where to go to order the Thrive stuff through us. I will share that link in the comments, Shirley. Right, now, right the here. recipe doesn't call for salt, but because I believe the world needs more salt, I always add a little, just a little tiny bit. This was my great-grandmother's recipe. So, my mom's mom's mom. So, this recipe's been tested for more than 70 years. It is loved by everybody. Okay, so just mix... See, just mix it up real easy. Okay. Then you're going to take a half a cup of butter or margarine softened right here. And um, we're going to put it in right there. And then just take and smush it up like this. Oh, Monica's asking, how about how would it work with frozen blueberries? It would work just great. I would just put the blueberries in and let them be frozen and just put this topping on top. And Jan asked, I think she's talking about the Thrive ones. I realize you may not know the answer, but how long would they stay good after opening? One year. You can open them and keep them a year? Yeah. Wow. Now, on some of the meats, you'll need to use the meats a little bit quicker, like three to six months. Um, because they have more fat in them. They are all non-GMO, but they aren't all organic. So they do have some organic products, but not everything is organic. But it is all 
non-GMO. Um, and uh, I don't know, so far I've just been really liking everything that's coming from them because it just seems to work really, really well. Okay. Oh, Monica says hello. I enjoy watching. Thank you, Monica. Okay, so they're not quite reconstituted yet, but you know what? I don't think it really matters because by the time I get the stuff on... Okay. Oh, wow. Kirsten says, Northwest Ontario, Canada, blueberries grow wild in many places. We pick some every summer. Uh, Susan said, Michigan, Susan Storms, Michigan has great blueberries in the woods and by the lakes. She said, used to pick them as a child. So when we lived in Idaho, they had... Um, Blackberries. Blackberries along the road we would go pick, and they were so good. We, I can't imagine having blueberries all over. We heard that they also had huckleberries, but we didn't find any when we were in Idaho, did we? No. I think those were mostly in Montana. I don't know that Idaho had, or maybe just not in our part of Idaho, I guess. Maybe over towards the Montana side more, I would suppose. Okay. Barb and, Barb and Joyce both like the weather too, the cooler weather too, but not snow. I don't mind snow. I'd rather have a fireplace when I have snow, but okay. Oh, um, mm. Lissandra is asking what page is this in the cookbook? Uh, can you see it right there? Can I wash my hands? It is on page 285. It says apple crisp on here, but you can substitute um, three cups of blueberries for these six apples. It says three up. Wait, is that right, dear? Huh? Is it six apples? I thought the website yeah. said three. Uh-uh. Oh, okay. It should say six. Uh, let me just make sure I got that right on the website. And then you got to pick out the crumbles. Oh, yep, yeah, six. Okay. And eat them because they're delicious. But you said that's equivalent to three cups of blueberries. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so there you have this. And then you take your quarter of a cup of water. Stop it! Ugh, the flies. And you drizzle your quarter of a cup of water over top. Now, I didn't do quite a quarter cup because I have a little bit left from my reconstituting of my blueberries. But I'm going to stick it in the oven. Oh, 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 Dave! Where'd you go? Okay, BJ? You want me to get the cameras? I want you to turn Yes. To Look at my gloriously clean oven. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, don't do it until we get okay. it on there. You ready? There we go. There, just pointing it willy nilly. <laughs> I think you got it. Can you guys see Isn't that? that gloriously clean? I spent all day yesterday. Okay, not all day. I spent like Is this supposed to be 15 on you minutes. Now? Yeah, I spent like 15 minutes cleaning the oven yesterday. <laughs> Still zoomed in. Where's our camera operator, dude? Sorry, I need to do stuff. My mother would be ashamed if I'm she not saw paying you to do that other stuff. what the oven looked like <laughs> before. Okay, so Diamond Knife Cookbook, Apple Crisp. See guys, that took me less than five minutes to throw all that together. And I was yakking in the middle of that. Usually it takes me like three minutes, so. Ooh, wonderful blessed life says, oh my, I have so many blueberries in the freezer, this could be so yummy. I've had it hers is. before, it's really delish. Yeah, it's super delish. Okay, so let me set my timer. Wow, Bandana's a fan. Thank you, Bandana Grandma. Hey, she, Bandana Grandma. She says, I highly recommend Dining on a Dime Cookbook. I ordered six. She did. It was wow. funny. Um, so Bandana, we really love it. How many do we order? <laughs> yeah, we ordered 2,500 copies this last time. Dave, are you paying attention? <gasps> Go and Betty, Betty just what? Go and Betty just gave you a super chat. Super chat. For living on a dime. Say love living on a dime. Thank what? you. <laughs> Thank you guys. So I was Thank chatting you. with Go and Betty. So it was hilarious. So I was talking, so go and Batty, put your link up for tonight's show. They're on tonight after us. And Bandana Grandma, put your link up there. And Jamie, you can put your link up there. Um, so I was chatting on Facebook. So in a Facebook post, I was talking to um, uh, Heather from Go and Batty. And then I private messaged Kevin because I had another question. <laughs> I had a question for her about the recipe. I had a question for him about a link. So here, he was sending me a video and she was replying on the Facebook thing. And he sent a video and he said, yeah, he said, she's sitting here talking to you and I'm sitting here talking to you. 
<laughs> we had a three-way conversation. It was pretty funny. All right. Wait, so North Dakota Pink said, yeah, I made the live stream. How many times a week do you go live and what time? We go live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. Mountain Time. So. 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central. 3.30 Pacific. <laughs> mm. What about if you're in Newfoundland? Well, you're... <laughs> oh, that was hot. Going down. What oh. is it? Tea? Wasn't as cool as I thought it was. <laughs> okay, so everybody asked me to make Thrive Chicken Salad, so I'm going to throw that together. Can I just have chicken by itself? Ooh. Dave loves the chicken. Can you get this? Because Aiko says blueberries are extremely expensive on Okinawa. The Thrive is looking feasible. Can you order it? You put your in pizza. Okinawa? I don't know can. if they can ship it there. Well, I got to thinking because even though it's more expensive than some of what we can get at times, like somebody the other day was in San Francisco and I was thinking, yeah, yeah I bet it's a lot cheaper than the San Francisco. Okay, so I need that recipe right there, oh, please. Oh, chicken salad. So you're okay. doing an experiment now. I'm doing an experiment. The Thrive Chicken Salad. Let's give it a try here and see. Okay, scroll down. Oh, oh, that smells good. That smells... Mmm, that smells good. What is that? Onions. That smells really good. Wow. I don't want the salad part, I just want the chicken. You just want the chicken? Yep. Okay, so how many onions? Two tablespoons of onions. Okay. Wait, where? I see chicken slices. Right oh, here. two tablespoons. Okay, yeah. so I got my two tablespoons of onions. Okay, and then what next? Do you want to share this recipe to say this is what we're doing? Uh, you can, yeah. Uh, chicken? Chicken. A one and a half cups, it says. Here, I'm going to share the recipe we're looking at so you guys know where it is. This is not our recipe. This is just a Thrive recipe, and since Tara was deciding to try to, by somebody's try request it. on Monday, trying to make chicken salad with this. Somebody asked me to make it, so I thought, okay, well, I'll try it. Okay, so how much celery? Uh, a quarter cup celery. Okay. Ooh. Man, that all smells really and good. And I like extra celery was, in mine. That you could smell it when it was freeze-dried. So I wonder what the well, celery tastes like. Celery actually is. is. So... They dehydrate it and then they freeze it super, super cold. Hmm. If I understood correctly, I think that's correct. I hope that's correct. Hmm. Mm. Actually, that celery's pretty good by itself. Okay, how much water? Oh, I missed something here. Uh, sorry, I'm losing comments over there. Water. Uh, chicken slices, onions, freeze dried. Did you get mayonnaise? Oh, you're not. You not have yet. mayonnaise selected. Uh, where's water? I don't see water on there at all. Am I missing something? Oh, they didn't put the water on this one. Okay, well, we'll just Wait. take our chances here. Reconstitute chicken, onions, and celery by covering them in water. Allow to sit for 10 minutes and drain excess okay. water. Okay, so we'll just try that and see how it goes. Why not? Let's make the life chicken interesting. Chicken salad, is it cold water? You know, Tara could add a whole new dimension to the thriving. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Pamela is asking, what are we making? We made blueberry, um, what is it, blueberry? Cobbler. Cobbler. Or crisp. What's the difference between a crisp and a cobbler? I don't know what the difference between a crisp and a cobbler is. If somebody knows, tell me. I don't know. And I just reshared the recipe in the description, or in the comments, and now Tara's making... Chicken um, salad. Chicken salad from Thrive, which is like yeah. freeze-dried stuff. It's freeze-dried. We're, we're just check testing it to see, because somebody asked how yeah. it would make... And we do get a commission from this, so, you know, just so you know, nobody's yelling at me. We do get a commission from this, but guys, I really, it took me six months to decide to sell this. <laughs> because... Can you the camera back on you? Yeah, you can. Because okay. I just wasn't sure. Because usually people don't do well on our business with other people's products. So, I wasn't really sure. But, this is such good food. On our way home, we had a can of pomegranate bites. Oh, those, and Ellie ate they're the them. They're very best. Ellie ate them almost all gone the first two days. An entire size 10 can. So Melissa and Hope so they were always good, weren't they? Are both asking if that's dried chicken or freeze dried it is. chicken? It is. It's freeze dried chicken. Yeah. And believe it or not, she made some chicken soup or something the other day, and it was I was super thinking. Yummy. Because when it's freeze dried, it looks sort of like foam. But when we had it in the soup, I thought, man, this is pretty awesome. Yeah. Of course, I'm, I'm the skeptical one, so. Okay, so while we're waiting for, we have to wait 10 minutes for this to um, refresh. 
and uh, then we'll see about the chicken salad. Barb says, Northern Michigan, we have blueberries, huckleberries, and blackberries. We always picked them for pie when I was a kid. Oh. Uh, somebody was asking what other fruits. Your mom said you can use canned fruit, frozen yeah. fruit, freeze dried yeah. fruit. Yeah, so you could use canned. I would um, drain off the liquid of peaches if you wanted, but you could use pie filling, any flavor of oh. pie filling if you wanted oh. instead. Cherry, strawberry, uh, strawberry rhubarb. You could use peaches, you could use blueberry, any of those. So Heidi is asking Turid if they should visit Living on a Dime together, both from Norway. <gasps> We, we should come ah, visit you. We should come visit you. That would be a trip. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> that would be a trip. Oh, yeah, that oh, could be oh. taken two ways, and they probably don't get it because they're from Norway, so they don't understand our English. A lot of people are saying they love your apron today. Thank you. Mom made this apron, and we have three aprons waiting to go for some next occasion that Mom <laughs> made. They're all we here waiting. Uh, 100,000 subs. So we're it. almost to 60,000 subs. I was trying to decide. Our longest uh, Lisa says, good job on the clean oven. What did you use to clean it? Uh, I use Easy Off, which is just lye. So if you're a soap maker, you can just make up some lye and spread around there. So you but didn't use the like heating setting or whatever? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, it was already 90 yesterday. I, I didn't know. want it totally. to be. I agree with you. Don't you uh, think? Alexi's asking, how do you order the book? It's Here's the link for it right here. I just put it in the comments. Um, and if you, for some reason, don't see the comments, you can go to our website, livingonadime.com, and click store. Yeah. Also, guys, for the Thrive, for the month of September, okay, this is where you're going to be thinking in your head, oh, no, she's doing this to me again. But Wait, wait what? Sorry, I was <laughs> reading about Jill E. says that, I think it's in the U.K., that cobbler has a scone-like topping. Oh, okay, so a crisp is more um, oatmeal. And a cobbler would be more just flour and sugar and butter. So for the month of September, if you guys place a hundred dollar or more order for Thrive, we will give you a free Dining on a Dime ebook to go with it. Because as we're going through this, I've noticed that all not quite, but like 90, 80 to 90 percent of these recipes can be used with Thrive products. So do you still love me anyway? Yeah. So if you order $100 or more in September, I will give you a free Dining on a Dime ebook. <laughs> Sally says 8.30 in the morning in Sydney going back to sleep. Oh man, please do. Good night. Okay, so I'm going to show no, you. No, it's morning. Well, I know, but if she's going back to sleep, then she hasn't finished oh, the night yet. Oh, then. Gotcha. Um, so I'm going to try to show you my thrift store deals while we're waiting the last five minutes for this to rehydrate. But look at this, what I found for Jack. It's just like yours! It is! It's just like yours! Very nice. Corduroy. Mike has one. It was $3 at the thrift store and it was 40% off today. So I got this for about $1.60. Um, I got me a pair of corduroy pants for three dollars super excited about that i got mike Ooh, aiko uh, somebody here says that that the thrive is available in japan so yay oh cool well so yeah you're right that probably would be cheaper if your price is really well, high follow our link and order then um yeah i have one just like that and i've been wearing it for a long time because i only get like three wearings that i'm out in the winter because it's so so warm. warm. So you and Jack could be matchy matchy. How could be twins. No, it could be our Christmas card this year. So then I got Mike this one. What do you think? Nice. Three dollars. <laughs> and then, okay, I paid more for this. Mother, don't yell at me. Judy, but, yes, Tara is making the chicken salad recipe now. She put some together and she's just it's reconstituting it. Yeah, the... It's refreshing right now. So we're just giving it another minute and then I'll show you. So then I got this one. What do you think? Ooh, nice. That one I paid $7 for. Mom, close your ears. Oops. Um, it was not the cheap day at the thrift store, but Mike really needs some shirts. Uh, and I got him this one. For all of you who are asking about the book, I'm resharing the link again to where you can find it. Got him this one. Nice. Do you like those? And you should hold them in front of me and have people vote. Okay, so what do you think, guys? Here we go. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> so there's one. Do you like one? Okay. Uh, Louise is asking, we don't know if the Thrive is available in Australia, do we? I don't know. 
I, Louise, I can um, get back to you and let you know. There's two. Oh, you're looking pretty dashing there. Yay. I don't know. Here's I'm not three. seeing a lot of thumbs ups going across the screen. Well, hold on. Hold on just a minute. <laughs> Better give him a thumbs up, guys, so he doesn't have self-confidence issues. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? Self-confidence issues. <laughs> then the other two things I got. And by the way, I reused the bags for my trash can. So the other two things I got was my favorite CD ever broke. It broke? It broke. Where so did you get look this? what I found. Michael Crawford. At the Ark. My favorite CD ever. They had two of them. I almost bought both of them and I thought, well, the first one lasted me 20 years, so this one will last me probably 20 years. Oh, there are the thumbs ups. Yay. Thanks, everyone. Is your self-confidence back? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> um, I found my Michael Crawford CD. I should have got the other one to give away. Because I love it so much. And then I found this mug. Uh-oh. Which one's that one now? <laughs> Don't even want to know. What do you guys think? What do you think? Oh, is that, is that a... oh, I am the queen. <laughs> <laughs> I like it better than the other one. <laughs> no, I think I like the other one more. Uh, I am the queen of everything. We used to have I, mean, I am the queen of everything and Mike had I am the king of what's left. <laughs> But they broke. So. Yeah, but Mike wasn't too sure about that. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, so that was my good thrift store uh, deals today. So we have a few questions on the Thrive. Okay. Um, Joanne says, I made sure you got the commission on my order. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. And, and thank you, Kathy. And I can't remember who the other person was that ordered. Jan says you morning. can store it on your shelf. Or can you? She's asking if you can store it on your shelf. Yes. Yes. And Debbie wants to know, how does that fit into living on a dime? Because it's expensive, she said. Okay, so I, that's my disclaimer that I made the other day. It is expensive, but as I said the other day, I have been really super sick lately. This is cheaper than going out to eat. And I will tell you, probably 80% of our audience, the biggest issue they have with groceries is going out to eat. Seriously, one lady emailed me and said that her and her husband alone saved $22,000 in one year just on lunch. That was it. She saved every receipt and they spent $22,000. And after they saw that, they did not um, eat out lunch anymore. So for me, I'm looking at this as a convenience item like this chicken salad. I could make me up a serving of this. My family doesn't eat a lot of chicken salad. So you could just make one serving? I could just make one serving. Like my grandparents, who are 90 years old and still living at home, my grandmother would love this because she wouldn't have to cut up and keep a bunch of celery and that kind of thing. My mom, who's single, also. Me, I'm chronically ill. Today, we went to the thrift store, but after we got back, I was so sick. I had to lay on the couch until the show because I just didn't know if I was going to be able to do it. And quite frankly, I forgot about dinner. So, because <laughs> I was so sick. So, I'm not going to sit and tell you, I don't believe that it's cheaper than buying fresh. I really don't. But I do think that it is cheaper than throwing out food and going out to eat. So, that's where I'm coming from on that. And... I, I wasn't listening to what you said, but one thing that we were contemplating for ourselves... You know, you just opened... You just opened that up. I know. <laughs> I was trying to monitor comments. I'm trying to answer people's questions. I know. I'm just kidding. Um, it, I don't know if Tara mentioned it, but we have been finding lately... We've been noticing a lot of waste in our fresh fruit. And yeah. Vegetables and things. Like Ellie will buy a thing of mushrooms and she'll use this much for an omelet and forget it's in there and the rest of the mushrooms whole package go will go bad and so, so we weren't sure on yeah. those if that would be a problem or not so that's where i think it saves um and yeah now Wait, so what did you say a, a free dining on dime ebook yeah so i'll give you guys a free dining on dime ebook so if you order a hundred dollars or more in september um, Man, that smells good. Doesn't it smell good? <laughs> but, um, what was I going to say? Yeah. So, anyway. 
All right, so I don't have any walnuts for this, but Mike doesn't like walnuts anyway, so cut up my grapes. Ooh. One person says the blue shirt, one says the dark gray one. Janine says I love shirt two the best. The others are good too. Do you remember which one was shirt shirt two? The uh, grayish one. And um, Alexia wants to know <laughs> if you got those at the Ark or Goodwill. Um, they were food. <coughs> Sorry. I got them at Habitat for Humanity and oh, two Habitat Humanity restores we went to and one ARC. Uh, Kim is asking, is the recipe in the Dining on Dime cookbook? Yes. yes. What page was it on? And um, uh, the apple crisp was on page, what was it 280, uh, here, 285. So a lot of people are asking. Apple crisp, page 285. So I'm sharing the link for the cookbook first, and then I'm going to also share the link for the recipe, so you can go there even if you don't have it right and now. And the chicken salad is on page 116. So you can use our chicken salad recipe for this on page 116. It looks like chicken salad. It does, doesn't Ooh, it? Are you putting grapes in chicken salad? Yeah. Is that it's is creamy. that on the recipe or you just did that? Um, no. Well, I don't know. <laughs> some people do, some people don't. Melissa says, I have you guys on my TV and I'm in the chat on myself. <laughs> oh, and the Therapy Mom is a new subscriber. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for subscribing. Please, if you're on Facebook, would you head over to YouTube and subscribe? We have other videos other than our live shows that we have on YouTube. We are you watching right almost now. to 56,000 subscribers. What? Can you Yay. believe that? Thank you everyone for doing Thank that. Thank you guys. We really appreciate it. Um, okay, so I should have drained the water off of this a little bit. I didn't let it. I should have drained it off a little bit, but that's okay. Here we go. <laughs> Noah's Ark 1962 says, Sun brought us pizza. Hungry Howie's. That's a great name for a pizza place. <laughs> Okay, you're supposed to let this sit for an, for one hour in the fridge, but, ma'am, that is good. Mmm. So, mm. it does, I think it would be better if it was... Does that have bacon in it? No. What no bacon. It? Must be the chicken. You're just tasting the mayonnaise and mustard because it tastes like my... Mm. Well, no, you don't eat my deviled eggs. You don't Man, like that it. Is, that is really good. Okay, that is good. Man, Chicken actually, salad, guys. Here's our dinner. So, look at it. So you would never know this was dehydrated before. Uh-uh. It's not dehydrated, it's freeze-dried. Look, look, or freeze-dried. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Since our camera operator is slacking on the job again, this is what it looks like. Oh, okay. It looks like it's, it doesn't look like at all that it was freeze-dried at all before. It looks delicious. It looks moist. Man, that is really good. And guys, what I love about this is that, like today, I woke up sick to my stomach. I was like, I am going to throw up. And I have been sick to my stomach all day long. I think it's just the heat and my allergies. But <laughs> this would be so nice to be able to just make one serving for myself and not have to think about chopping a bunch of stuff and all that kind of thing. So I'm going to let this thicken for an oh, hour, but man. Did we share your mom's news? Uh -uh. She's lamenting it on Facebook. So mom had some tragic news this weekend. Oh, wait, yes, hold on, can't sorry. Debbie's it. asking if we're selling the Thrive. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. And I can show you a link with that. Um, Tara was saying if you happen to order $100 worth, that we're also giving a free Dining on a Dime ebook. Yeah. So. Is Cat Lover on there? I just shared the link. Cat Lover was, she said she was trying to get on the Facebook side and was having trouble, but I didn't see oh, what no. the trouble was. Okay. So Cat Lover oh, sent. Hey, I didn't share with that link, but we do get a commission if you buy through that link. Mm -hmm. um, just so you know. So. All right, Dave, come here. Okay. But we wouldn't recommend it if we didn't yeah, think it was good. Exactly it In fact, we've kind of hovered over it for like a month before yeah. we decided to mention it. He's gonna have so, super authentic. Cat Lover sent Dave and Jack a present. Oh, let me see if she's okay. on. I don't see. Well, I'll tell her to watch. I'll tell her to watch the replay. Okay. Oh, oh, Go that ahead. knife hurt. That knife really hurt. Okay, here's a note. Okay, let me read the note first. Hold on. Okay. Hey guys, I just wanted you both to know that you wrecked the show while Mom was gone. I know Mom and Dad have already told you how happy they are with you, 
but I thought you should know that from your viewers too. You received a bunch of super chats, that's cool. Well, I thought I'd make you something. I hope you enjoy them. These are wall hangings. I keep one by my bed to hold my phone, flashlight, pen and paper, whatever. I hope you can use them. Thanks again for all your hard work. Love, Pat, AKA the cat lover. <laughs> okay, so she says yours is the car one and Dave's is the, yours okay, is let's the top. see. Oh, 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 oops, careful. Okay. Don't bust it. Hey, Mary. Uh, oh. Yes, blueberry yes, cobbler. The recipe is. <gasps> you ha it's in the book, but you can also get I it right here. I love these things so much. I shared it in the comments. Sweet. Look. What are they? They're they're to hang on the wall to put <gasps> like their phone and Dave oh, can put his iPad wow. in there. That's like that thing. <laughs> I like... love these things. That is so nice. see that one? Oh, and a box of chocolates. Gotta oh, cover up everyone. That's a smile emoji and Pez stickers. dispenser. <laughs> Cat lover, if you're even on. <laughs> nice. I even got a massive wow, eraser. Later. Look there. Oh, that's cute. How nice. I got Thank a huge you. eraser. Did you get a big eraser? That Cause... was so nice. Nope, he got stickers. Oh, he got. He got a big stickers. eraser. Come here. Let's see. What did you get? Oops. <laughs> huh? Does they it... got an oops eraser. Oh, that's, that's massive. That's funny. Oh, thank oh, that's you. A huge oops eraser. I know. Isn't that funny? That is okay. cool. So you got a car, Thank a Route 66 you. one, and you got a solar system? Yep. Yeah. Nice. That's funny. I'm going to go put this awesome. above my Does head. Yeah. if you're on. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, did you want to tell everybody about the bad day at school today? Oh, right. And get their opinion. Yeah. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I Melissa got... wants Dave to take a bite of the chicken salad. I got a half a pez. No, 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 these are only mine. Um, I have one. That's do you have that chicken in the can stuff? This one. Yeah. Quilte is asking, does it have, how much sodium is in it? I can't Zero. Have sodium. It's only chicken. They didn't put any salt that, or anything in it. That's the great thing about the Thrive is it's only the chicken or only the onions. Now, the things like the pomegranate yogurt bites or the cherry yogurt bites, they will have a few more ingredients like the yogurt and the sugar. But the single ingredients are just that, just celery, just chicken, just beef, those kinds of things. So there's no sodium added. Um, and we had, we had a question from one person, um, are all our shows going to be Thrive shows now? No. <laughs> no, they're not going to all be shows, but if I can use it in, a pro in, in my cooking, I will because, you know, it's a good, it is a good product and I like it. And so I'm going to use it. But... As I said with the blueberries, you can more than easily just substitute regular blueberries. I just wanted to test it with the blueberries because I haven't done that properly yet, so. Jane says I'm a math tutor and love the oops eraser. Never saw one before. That's pretty cute. We, oops. We should ask everyone to pray for Katie Jo. She said her husband was sick for a long time, but he passed away the other day. Oh, I'm sorry, Katie Jo. So, we're really sorry, so. All you prayer warriors out there would pray. That'd be awesome. Yeah, so sorry. Um, yeah, Mary, uh, I, I shared the recipe in the comments so you don't actually have to have the book to make the cobbler. You yes, do. Kim, raspberry would bake the same amount of time. Peggy Chopped says, pecans. Oh. you didn't tell us about the news about Jill. The news of, oh, oh, the, oh, mom had a travesty happen Saturday. Oh. It was oh, very you sad. You didn't tell me about the. You didn't, um, I uh, didn't tell them about the whole oh, school thing. Okay, let's tell them about Nance thing, and then we'll tell them about the school thing. So, mom went to her favorite thrift store that she's been going to for 45 years, and. Buster. Um. Go on, Buster. She went to go to her favorite thrift store. That's where she buys like 90% of her non-food items. And they said, had a sign on the door that said 50% off everything until it's gone. We're closing the doors today. Yep. It was a very sad day. We, we sang taps for her. Mm, oh. These pets are pets. Yes, she was Peggy. sad. Well, that was like her, Pet that was her, her, favorite. her number one favorite sure place in Wichita. <laughs> her favorite thrift store ever. 
play singing taps again for you. Um, I already made the blueberry cobbler. It's in the oven cooking. So that's why we're talking about other things while it's finishing cooking. Whoever it went by really quick, but anyway. Um, uh, oh, Donna asked, I was wondering if the dried celery would be crispy on the chicken salad, was it? Well, I don't know because I haven't refrigerated it yet, but, ah, well, it landed in uh, the bag. Yes, Valerie, I will post that link again Actually, for the dried stuff. It's not hard crispy, but it's not soft either. I just reposted it, Valerie, so it's in the, it should be at the top of the comments. I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting, huh? Okay, any more comments before Jack? Mary Alice is asking, there are, so there are no sulfites in Thrive? No, there's not. And see... How, what are sulfites? I don't want to keep going on, you know, because I, I realize, you know, it's expensive, and I don't want you guys to think that I'm just, like, pushing and pushing, but that's why I like it, because... It doesn't have any other added ingredients. It's only chicken. Oh. And I can't eat MSG. I can't eat nitrates. I can't eat sulfites. I can't eat anything like that. And that's what, and that's what I really like about it. So, oh, is she on there now? No, but Louise was asking what was in Dave's. because Oh, it's a walking Pez camera, dispenser. So. It's a walking uh, Pez dispenser. Okay, done with questions so Jack can tell what happened at school today. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. All right. Tell them what happened to school today. Nan's here. She'll, she'll sympathize with you. Um, wait. Oh, I broke the dispenser. No, you didn't. You just twisted. Go ahead. Tell them. I'll fix so, it. So, um, so today at school, at lunch, like 10 people were talking in my class when they weren't supposed to be. So the whole class got in trouble. A class and I punishment. Wasn't, and I was not one of the people who was talking. Class punishments are stupid. <laughs> you should be killed. So, no, David. No, no, the yeah, class punishments We're really be unhappy oh, about group punishments. <laughs> so here's the problem, though. What did they have you to do, ask you to do? Here's Dave's, you guys, if you want to see it. They asked me Louise, this to is the write one a letter saying sorry for what what we did. Even... even even though some people didn't, you know. So what's the problem with writing a, writing a letter about saying you're sorry for something you did when you didn't do it? It's a lie. Thank you. <laughs> now, an eight-year-old can figure this out. This has been a problem at every school our kids have gone to, where it's like group punishment, and I'm thinking, you know, I don't understand. They're when, specifically when asking you have, to lie. When you're educating children, and, and you have a lot of education, doesn't it make sense that if kids that are behaving well constantly are getting punished for things they didn't do, it kind of removes the incentive for them to behave well. So then How do you know, dear? Because <laughs> when I was in... How do you know, Ellie and BJ and David? When I was in elementary school, I, was pun I and another guy were punished for things because we were trying not to be doing what the rest of the class was doing. And after that, I started doing all kinds of sneaky things. And BJ has since, now that he's out of school, he's confessed to the same thing. And I think Ellie is laughing in a way that, no, she didn't. She didn't. But, but I'm thinking, you know, I think it's just, it's very non-productive to punish kids for things they didn't do. Well, and then it's promoting lying. So it's okay to lie and say that you were talking in class, but then when you're accused of murder... And you didn't do it. Why well, it's is that like, not okay? To me, it's kind of like if somebody walks into the grocery store and, and runs out with a candy bar that they arrest everyone in the store for shoplifting. <laughs> like, what? So what did Dad tell him to write in his letter? <laughs> so, well, first of all, I'll probably go talk to them because I always do when this kind of thing happens. Talk but to my parents. I told, I told Jack if they ever at, group punish them again and, and require him to write an apology letter that he needs to write on it. I'm sorry that I'm being punished for something I didn't do. <laughs> and I told him if they, if they, if you get in trouble for that, you come to me and tell me and I'll go talk to them that day. Because I, I think that's not, it's not a good way to raise kids by, to, it's not helping the parents raise the kids when in school they punish the kids that are behaving well. And you know, I've had teachers or schools say, well, I just, you know, I can't watch 30 kids. And I was thinking, I was in a Catholic school through the eighth grade. And I guarantee you, they would single out the one kid that did it. Yeah. 
No, and, it's like mom said. And that one kid would never do it again. They don't want kids to give in to drugs for peer pressure. Oh, and they I don't want kids to drink for peer pressure. But, okay, we're going to have peer pressure for lying, for saying we did something we didn't do. Why is that okay? The teachers are bullies. Yeah, I mean. Well, no, is. we're not saying it's all just, teachers, but we're just no, saying. No, but when they do that kind of thing, but when they you're do bullying that, the kids. That is, well, and that, the teacher, the teacher you're talking about was also calling them stupid and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. The teacher called them stupid. I went into that school and I had a chat with him. Yeah. And I didn't Music do teacher. I didn't do anything. Oh. I was just a firm parent. But he told the principal that he was afraid for his life. <laughs> and I was thinking, well, if my kid's gonna come to your school and get abused then he That teacher just, was a weenie. He didn't just call me stupid, he called the entire grade that they were all brat. I told yeah. him that if I tr and I told the principal should, like, if I treated my kids out. like this at home, <laughs> SRS would come to my house and be interviewing me. Yeah. So why is it okay to do that at school? They're I not at, thankfully they're not at that school anymore. Yeah, which this is why is, they're not at that school. This is actually at a school that we've had a better experience than virtually all the schools at so far. We've had to go in a couple times for something. When they were teaching that aliens were <laughs> giving us our I don't technology. think that was sanctioned by the school, though. I think that that teacher was just... Well, it went on for three years. Did? Was it? No. Yes. It went on for I never heard yes, about it until The April. teacher told me it went on for three well, years. Well, probably because nobody told the upper management. But... So, anyway, yeah. That teacher retired after we talked to the school. Oh, no, no, whatever. <laughs> well, you talked to them. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Okay, so my my cobbler has 12 minutes left. So it's almost done. Patricia's asking why can't they talk at lunch. I, I understand what they're trying to do because it's really loud in the lunchroom when all the kids are talking at the same time. Although, I don't know. Are I, you I about the music But there are or? enough adult supervisors in there that I think that they could probably manage that in a better way. That wasn't the problem with the music teacher. Because the kids get terrified when they start, they like flashlights or ring a bell or something and the kids that are behaving get terrified that they're going to get punished. So, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Um, Needless to say, homeschooling could happen at any time at our house, but we're trying not to because I'm tired and worn out. Yeah. Uh, well, I do think that the idea is the kids will pressure each other to stop, but to me that's teaching them to do what you're telling them not to do in other contexts. <laughs> so yeah. I think it just confuses the kids, but we want to make sure though, at least as much as we can control it, that our kids at least know that that's bye. not okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so Le, uh, Ledera says your son knows what they want done is wrong. If the school is so much, if the school is better than some of the others, this line you want to stand firm on. So what I was thinking on this case is I'm not going to go in there and raise a big horrible stink, but I'm just going to go in there and say to the there's a new principal there, and I had an understanding with the old principal, but I'm just going to go in there and say, hey, I don't want him being punished as part of group punishment and. When this is happening, it causes more problems than it solves, and here's why. And I, I will probably—I mean, I wouldn't raise a big fuss and like cause a major conflict at the school. But what I would do is say, my son—if if my son has this happen again, I, I told him to write on the paper, "I'm sorry, I'm being punished for something I didn't do," and that he's not going to be punished for writing that on that paper. And if not, if so, I'll come back in and have a more firm chat with you. Here's the thing. Cause, cause the thing is, I realize, I realize that they're in a situation and they may not change and it's not worth like drawing swords completely over. But at the same time, they need to know that's not okay. Yeah. If you don't say something, this isn't a take it to the Supreme court thing, but this kind of stuff, when parents don't stand up and say something, that means you're agreeing with it, just like the whole alien thing back in April. No parent said anything until me and David's friends, no, mom no. went in. For three years, this teacher was teaching that aliens gave us our technology. Seriously? No kids mentioned it at all either. So, you know, I'm sorry, but you need to stand up for these things and you need to say something as parents. And yes, we spend a lot of time at school having chats because it's 
This will be our second but, chat in the month with the school. But even but. though I was going to talk to them, I'm not going to make it. You know, there have been things like when they were calling, like in David's class when they were group punishing and calling them stupid and stuff like that. I ran in and I really pulled out all the stops. Because I was thinking, I'm sorry, nobody's going to be telling my kids they're stupid <laughs> because other kids aren't behaving. And even if my kids weren't behaving, stupid isn't really what you should be telling them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, I, but in this case, I was just going to go talk to them. I'm not going to go in and demand that they change that, but I am going to tell them if it happens to him, this is what I've instructed him to do. And he's not going to be punished for behaving that way or for writing mm -hmm. that on the letter if he has to. I mean, obviously, if, they miss, if they're completely defiant and not doing anything that the school wants, they understand they're not supposed to do that. But in the same way, okay, so some people might not approve of this, but I bet you some people will. I've told all of the kids, but it is mostly relevant to the boys, from when they're little, at some point in your school time, there's going to be a kid, and he's going to be picking on people, and nobody's going to do anything about it. And you know, as much as you can, you want to avoid conflict, you want to just walk away from somebody when they're acting out of, out of bounds or whatever. But if there's somebody that just keeps doing stuff and nobody's taking care of it, Especially you may have to take him out. <laughs> And PJ did, and that took PJ care of and it. David have both had that experience <laughs> just once. <laughs> because had you had it twice? Yeah. Well, when they're not, because one thing that BJ was surprised about is when you're not in the habit of, if you're in the habit of doing that, then you're a troublemaker. If you're not in the habit of doing that, and there's somebody who's harassing everyone and hurting people, and nobody's doing anything about it, then um, that's going to stop it. And I had to do that in school, too, and I was in Catholic school. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really risking a lot of punishment for standing up in that situation. Yep. But the thing is, um, at the same time, BJ had a friend who saw him do that, and this friend just started fighting all the time. And I was thinking, well, that's not going to be any good for you, buddy. So, anyway. Yeah. What did you want to say about your... So, I've modified the Pez dispenser. Look. It's pink right now. But, no, it's purple. Oh, cat lover's on there now. What do you tell her? Thank you, cat lover. Thank you he so loved much. It. They both loved it. If you missed it, go back a few, about 10, 15 minutes, and they opened it. Thank you. They Has loved it. Has the Spencer it. doing flip back flips or front <laughs> flips? Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, Heather says if one person stands up to a bully, then others will too. Yeah. Well, the other thing is that, the bullies are also when it's somebody like BJ or David who had never, ever done anything like that before. The bully then has to think with the next kid, what what does this kid have going on that I don't know about? Well, I remember... <laughs> and, and like with David, the bully that he hit suddenly would see me at the library, working at the library, and he would say, oh, David, David is so awesome. I just really like it. Is David here? And I'm thinking... It's like that little it's like that little dog in the cartoon. Hey Spike, Spike, what are we gonna do? You remember we're gonna go get a cat spike? <laughs> yeah. So I just think it kind of it makes things a little better, so <laughs> Did you ever find out if I broke that kid's jaw? Well that's interesting. Because I, I remember like the whole rest of the school year his mouth or his like right here was the size of a golf or a baseball. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Cherry says, I always tell myself when it comes to bullies, if you can, walk away, but don't let them beat you right or wrong. Told him he, had to, he could stand up for himself as a last resort. That's the thing is, I've always told him, don't, you, you don't want to just, you don't want, you want to be as calm and patient as you can. Like, a point. like with David, the kid kept yanking his glasses off and throwing them on the floor and pushing him and shoving him. With BJ, three kids jumped on him in a classroom. You can't really walk away from that. And in those moments... <laughs> kind of got me in those moments, excuse me. Well, I choked that. <laughs> you can't really get away particularly well. Or like with, I was proud of BJ when he was like in kindergarten. He saw a kid getting bullied in the bathroom. You okay? She's got her thumb up, so that must mean okay. He saw a kid getting bullied in the bathroom, and he, he at that time he went and told somebody that like third graders are picking on a kindergartner. So <clears throat> I, I think if we all had our, if we all told our kids, you know, hey, be <clears throat> calm and reasonable and rational, but there's some moment where something's going to happen, I think that would really cut it down greatly. Well, what's funny is 
the one kid that I hit, I'm not going to say his name because it's a pretty uncommon name. <laughs> he, like, as soon as I hit him, like, um, let's see, Tyler, I forgot the other, there were like three or four other kids that were picking on me too. They avoided me like the play. <laughs> <laughs> all the kids stopped picking on you when you took them out, huh? Well, I took the one out and yeah. they all stopped. Yeah. Yeah, flood like. Oh, I, Carol says my son uh, was being picked on by a girl. Nothing was being done about it. So when he took action, he was suspended for violence. You know. I don't care. My, you my can thinking suspend him, is, but I'm going to stand by him for that. Well, now, the other thing is, like, I, I also taught that. Like, with BJ, he hit the kid once. And Dave hit the kid once. But I, I've told him if I if you get suspended for doing something like that and, and it looks like it's a justifiable situation, I'm not going to punish you. And if the school were to suspend you, I'd let you play video games all day. <laughs> because, well, there was one... Send a picture to the principal. <laughs> well, when BJ was in... Didn't, it didn't end up coming to that, but when BJ was in elementary school, there was a, a kid who would, who would be really nice and then he would throw a rock at BJ in his, at his face. And then he would be really nice, and he'd hit him with a stick. And I talked to the principal of that school, but his mom worked there, and they were kind of afraid of getting on her bad side. And for that principal, I said, hey, you know, I understand the position you're in, so I've just told him, you know, if it continues and he has to do something, that I'll back him up on it. <laughs> and then the principal got in the middle of it and stopped it right away. But I was just thinking, they can't say no bullying, but then... Don't do anything when the bully is picking on everyone. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> so here's the apple crisp. Can they see it, Dave? Uh, yeah. Look at that yummy goodness right there. <laughs> Notice Mike keeps talking while Dara jokes to him. <laughs> Your mom says it's not because he doesn't care because she does it all the time. I, she had I, her thumb up. That was telling me yeah. she's okay. <laughs> I choke. I need to have my esophagus stretched my mom, my grandma, my great grandma all have the same problem. And whenever they get their esophagus stretched, I haven't had to go in for one yet for, so I need to go in and get it stretched, but I've been putting it off cause I just don't want to do it. But I choke like this at least once a day, sometimes several times a day. It just goes down and I get an air bubble stuck underneath whatever I'm eating or drinking. <clears throat> And I can't get the air bubble to go down until somebody pounds me on the back is what happens. So, okay. So this cat lovers on, by the way. Yes. Jack told her. Oh, cool. <clears throat> so this turned out terrific with the freeze dried <clears throat> blueberries. It's not soggy. Oh, ha, 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 it looks ha. darker than, than <clears throat> I've seen it before. Oh, actually. Wow. That's really, look at that. Wait, can you see? Actually, I don't know if they can see it because... No, they can. Can they? Okay. Oh, man. It's not soggy at all. So that worked perfectly. So this is a one <clears throat> pot dish if you count just the bowl. Well, I guess two pots, I suppose, because you had to mix up your crumble. So <clears throat> I didn't use a separate pot, though, to rehydrate the blueberries because I'm all for the less dishes you have to do, the better. Okay, so here so we go. So, Turid, what is VM in Norway? I'm curious. She's okay. saying they have a lovely day in Bergen. Goodbye, if you're leaving us. Okay, so go and batty, leave Ooh, your that time. email on again. We're going to try this real quick and see what it tastes like. Oh, yeah, go and batty. I don't have your link here. Mm. Oh. I didn't realize it was that time already. Oh, ma'am. Michael, leave the link for Dining on a Dime and Thrive if you want. And Thrive for the month of September. I'll send you a Dining on a Dime ebook. E that I will give you if you order a hundred dollars or more. So then, when they order, do they have to just tell you? No, I'll go in and find. Yeah, I'll go in and look it up for them. Okay, so I shared the Thrive link. I'm going to share the Dining link, and I'm also sharing the Go and Batty link because they're up next. Okay, so Mike's going to taste this yummy goodness. Yeah, I will. Let me grab Go and Batty. You guys see yeah, it while it's sure. cooling for just uh, a second? Sorry, guys, I wasn't prepared this time. Mmm. <laughs> uh. All right. This is delish. Ah. Sorry, I'm. You're waiting on me, aren't you? I am. 
Uh, okay. Always waiting on him. Sorry, I'm making it. It's the story of my life. Yeah, whatever. I'm gonna okay. get a t-shirt. So I'm sharing the link right now to go and batty. They're up next. They're just starting their show as we're finishing. Try a bite. Mmm. That delicious. Mmm. That is. Tonight's dinner: chicken salad and blueberry crisp. That's really good. All right, guys. And the leftover cookies from the other day. No, yeah, there's no cookies left. They ate them all. So. Oh, what size is the chicken can? Somebody's asking. Uh, this is the pantry size. This is the pantry. It's like the size of a and small. And this is the number ten can yeah. of coffee. So it says six ounces, but. Yeah. So there's six or ounces. Five point nine two. Freeze dried, so all the moisture is taken out. This equals uh, four cups of chicken, I think. If I'm understanding this right, I'm not sure. All right, <clears throat> there you go. We'll see you guys later. Yes, Louise, we'll check into that and we'll send you a Facebook message, so be looking for it. Have a good night. Please visit us at Living on a Dime. Bye, thanks everyone. It's good com, having you here. Man, it Facebook, sure flew by. YouTube. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to share? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> Man, that's good.